Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Karen Dina, and today we're going to talk about some of the different forms of vitamin B12. Now vitamin B12 is very appropriately named. It's given the name cobalamin, and the reason why is because if we look at the vitamin B12 molecule, we see at the center of the molecule, cobalt. There it is right there. Now the forms that we're going to talk about today are hydroxocobalamin, methylcobalamin, cyanocobalamin, and adenosylcobalamin. The first one we're going to talk about is hydroxocobalamin. And here's a picture of it right here. And in the center of the molecule we see cobalt. And what's attached to that cobalt is a hydroxyl group, an OH group, which is an oxygen and a hydrogen hooked together by a bond. There it is right there. Now hydroxocobalamin is made by bacteria. It occurs in nature, but it's not a human bioactive form of vitamin B12. So what our body has to do to it, it is, is it has to take the hydroxyl group off of the cobalamin and replace it with, for example, a methyl group to make it human bioactive, which brings us to our next form of vitamin B12, methylcobalamin. Now here's a picture of methylcobalamin. It looks very similar to hydroxocobalamin. The difference is what's actually attached to the cobalt in the center of the molecule. So instead of a hydroxyl group there, we find a methyl group. And there's a picture of it right there. A methyl group is made up of one carbon and three hydrogens hooked together by bonds. Methylcobalamin is a human bioactive form of vitamin B12. And it's involved in methylation reactions in the human body. And for those of you interested in learning more about these methylation reactions, I have a video on this channel that describes them. So I'd encourage you to go and watch that video. Our next form of vitamin B12 is cyanocobalamin. Now cyanocobalamin looks similar to the other forms of B12 that we've seen. There's a cobalt in the center of the molecule, but where it differs is what's attached to that cobalt. With cyanocobalamin, we have a cyano group attached to that cobalamin, it's composed of one carbon and one nitrogen hooked together by bonds. Now cyanocobalamin, is not a naturally occurring form of vitamin B12. It is a synthetic form that is made exclusively in a laboratory. It is, however, one of the most popular supplemental forms of vitamin B12. Cyanocobalamin is not human bioactive, so in order for it to be made active in the body, that cyano group has to be removed, and then either a methyl group or an adenosyl group needs to be added to that cobalt in the center of the molecule. Which brings us to our next form of vitamin B12, which is adenosyl cobalamin. Here's a picture of adenosyl cobalamin. It looks similar to the other forms of vitamin B12. There's a cobalt in the center of the molecule, but where it differs is what's attached to that cobalt. And with adenosyl cobalamin, we have an adenosyl group attached to that cobalt. There's cobalt highlighted in the center of the molecule. And as I mentioned earlier, adenosyl cobalamin is one of the human bioactive forms of vitamin B12. And it's specifically involved in reactions that create energy in the human body. It's also responsible for keeping methylmalonic acid levels appropriately low in the human body. Now, on this channel, I have a video that talks about the significance of methylmalonic acid. And if you're interested in that topic, I would encourage you to go and watch that video. Thanks for watching. And for those of you interested in learning more about our online and in person Science of Raw Food Nutrition classes, please visit our website at rawfoodeducation.com. And if you're interested in lab testing and nutrition consulting, please visit our website at rawfoodconsulting.com. And if you found this information to be interesting or useful, please like, share, and subscribe.